the connection of railways, canals and irrigation channels. In the streets of its great capital Lahore, there was uncertainty over which side of the city the border would fall. Satish Gujral was an art student in Lahore from a politically influential Hindu family. Most of my Muslim friends also agreed that logically speaking, there was more chance that Lahore will go to Indian side. Because seeing everything belongs to Hindus, education, money, banks, insurance, buildings. On the quayside at Bombay, Viscount Mountbatten bids beau voyage to 1,500 British soldiers. With tension increasing, the British government decided this was the moment to bring most of the remaining troops home. With just over a month to partition, tension on the streets of Lahore began to turn to violence. There was a date and everybody then knew that do whatever you can now, because after this date you won't be able to do it. Whether it's looting Muslims or looting Hindus, whatever it might be. So therefore, the, the, the date itself became a driver. With the border still to be decided, Muslims, Sikhs and Hindus began to clear their neighborhoods of anyone not of their community. ਮਾਹੌਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਖਰਾਬ ਹੋ ਲੱਗ ਗਿਆ ਫਿਰ ਇਹੋ ਹੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਇੱਥੋਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੁੰਡੇ ਸਨ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਰੇੜੀ ਦੇ ਵੱਢ ਕੇ ਨਾ ਵੱਢ ਵੱਢ ਜਾ ਕਰਕੇ ਇੱਕ ਅੱਧਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਮਿਲ ਗਿਆ ਕੋਈ ਜੋ ਫਸ ਗਿਆ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਵੱਢ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਬੋਰੀ ਪਾ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਲਿਆ ਕੇ ਉਹ ਗਾ ਸੀ ਉਥੇ ਲਿਆ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸਾਰ ਦੇ ਸਨ ਇਹ ਮੁੰਡੇ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਐਸੇ ਏਰੀਆ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਮੁਸਲਮਾਨ ਹੈਗੇ ਸਨ Despite violence erupting around the Punjab, the British presence was now minimal. John Moores and his small group of Gurkhas did what they could in Lahore. You tried to get in there quickly and say, well, what's happened with the police? And they say, well, this shop's been set on fire. And then the next thing which, which upped it would be someone would be killed or burnt. Um, and so then you get a reprisal from the other side, then picking on somebody else. And gradually, this is how it escalated. It was like a bushfire. And it was difficult to, to control. As Lahore tore itself apart, Mountbatten had other problems to solve. Partition was just a few weeks away, but the future of large parts of India had yet to be decided, that of the princely states. Ruled by princes, these semi-autonomous states were dotted around India. They had been allowed to run their own affairs in return for their loyalty to the British crown. The princes assumed the British would allow them to decide their own fate after they left. But Mambatan had done a secret deal with Nehru. He would hand most of them over to India. Narendra Singh Sarila, then a young prince, attended the meeting where Mambatan announced their future. In July 47, my father said that the last Chamber of Princes meeting is going to take place in Delhi, in which Mountbatten will address the princes. It is an important meeting. You go, you deputize for me. You know, he was trying to build me up. 
On July 25th, the princes gathered to hear what Mountbatten was offering them. He came and stood in front on the podium. And uh, I remember that he looked left and right while pictures were taken. It was, it, it was perfect uh, showmanship. And then he started addressing the princes, your highnesses, ladies and gentlemen, and he said that uh, we have no alternative but to sign the instrument of accession. Mountbatten told the princes they had little choice. Join the Indian Union or be swept away in a wave of democratic change. And I think this made a great impression and many of the princes who had these ideas that they would, they would become independent and do what they like, they, they, this collapsed. They realized that if they didn't sign, uh, most of the princes, the small ones, they would be most probably wiped out. With the princes in the bag, the partition settlement was nearly complete. All that remained was the final border, down to Sir Cyril Radcliffe. I think it was the loneliness of the decision which uh, I, I remember him talking about. It wasn't a single decision, it was a series of decisions about where the line should be drawn. These decisions were going to be his and he had to take responsibility for them. And I think he found that a lonely experience by comparison with some of the things he'd done. Sir Cyril had no time to see what was happening in the lands he was dissecting. His approach to drawing up the boundary, separating majority Hindu Sikh areas from majority Muslim ones, almost certainly encouraged the religious cleansing of entire districts. There were areas where the margins were not very great. Therefore, the majority in those areas wanted to make sure that the process didn't get fudged with small numbers. So drive those, the minority out, whether it is Hindu or Muslim minority, to make sure that this bit of territory doesn't slip out of your hands. Mayhem now ensued in the villages of the Punjab. A few individuals took a stand. Dylan's grandfather was threatened for trying to protect his Muslim neighbors. Some people had often sent messages to my grandfather that people who were going about looting and killing Muslims, they wanted to eliminate our family because we were putting a obstacle in their way. But my grandfather would not be deterred. He would not be afraid. He was that way. Small contingents of British-led troops scoured the countryside trying to stop the violence. But by then, they were just too few to make a difference. One had messages coming in all the time by hand, written messages. I can remember one, it was rather a sad, pathetic note by some chap who could write a little bit of English. And he had been in the Indian Navy. 
and on a scrap of paper this came in one day saying I, I'm home on leave at this particular village and my name is so and so, my number is so and so, please can you come and help us, we, we are going to be attacked. But by the time we located the village, we got there and the, the village had been attacked and I couldn't find this man, a lot of people were killed. Uh, so it was that sort of message, it was sad, you know, people desperate for help and knew where we were. But when I say we were, we were only a hundred people. I mean, the whole area was something like, what, 40, 40, 50,000 square miles? One village I went into where we knew there was something afoot. I hadn't been told to go there. I was coming back at the end of a patrol and I saw vultures circling and so that was usually a pretty good indicator and um, got into the village and sure enough it had been completely decimated. Uh, the well was full of bodies, women by one woman had been pregnant and she'd been carved open completely and breasts had been cut off and uh, an awful, awful atrocities. In Lahore, murder was now an everyday occurrence. With partition just two weeks away, rumours circulated that the city would go to Pakistan. Lahore's richer Hindus took no chances. There was tension. They, uh, the Hindus started leaving much before the partition Lahore. They knew that Lahore would go to Pakistan. They started leaving the city, but they pretended that they are not leaving. They kept their drawing rooms as as it were. There, all the sofas and all this, all the furniture was there. In the hearts, there was a, a, a hope lingered that Lahore would be on this side. कई जगह मारे मोटे सानो हो जाए, उतारे मार के बिचारे लुके रहे किसे जाइए किसे जाइए, वो लोग ही मोहिन, जिधर सौखे सान, वो पहले निकल निकल गया सान, उतारे मार के जंगल मार। Sam's father, a bank manager in Lahore, said if they could live under the British, they could live under the Muslims. I didn't want to leave. My father also didn't want to leave. He hoped. And he said, okay, all these people who are leaving, they are fools, they'll come back tomorrow. But that was not true. When our neighbors started leaving one by one, he still hoped. Uh, our closest neighbors, who uh, we had very close relationship, the Bhatias, when they left, my father wept that day. As thousands fled, Muslim gangs set fire to the Sikh and Hindu areas of the old city. The old Lahore, beautiful and historic, was in flames. At night when I used to sleep on the terrace, I could see the Hindu Shahalmi area burning five miles away. The flames could be seen, so high the flames were. Shalmi was a thickly populated Hindu area. It was burned down completely. And I could see five miles away the flames, the light, all that. And we were so terrified that night. All around my house, people were running. Children, elderly, women. 
when I